everybody, welcome back to the Northern Land Place of Binding of Isaac after Birth Plus. Gonna be playing Eden today. Just just making sure I had the <laughs> had the made it did it properly. Hold on, am I like insanely loud? Why do I why do I feel insanely loud? Is this the wrong device? Hello? Properties. Microphone. It's too it's too loud, right? Hold on. We're gonna pause this and see what's going on. Alright, it appears something had reset my my webcam mic to be my primary mic, or at least the it was too loud. Let's put it this way, I'm just testing things. This might be a little bit more on the level now. I'm hoping that I'm I'm kind of like in a good range. I might be slightly quieter than normal, but I, I seem to be in a pretty good spot. By the way, here's our seed. ZSHX AMG3. Um, lot to like. Lot, lot to not like that much. Like, to be honest with you, you're probably looking at this and you're going, like, what the heck is uh, wrong with your tier stat? Sure. I hear you on that one. I hear you on that one, and I agree with you on that one. Don't get me wrong. However, we do have purity. Purity is a, a, honestly like not a 10 out of 10 item, but it's better than I've given it credit for in the past. It sucks that whatever statistical benefit you gain can be taken from you so easily. Um, well, at least we got something to make our trinket worthwhile here. Um, but on the other hand, it's still very good. Like the, the fact that we're never going to say no to stats, I guess, is the easy way to say it. Um, you know, this is better because we can't really... Well, I was going to say we can't really double up on... Um, Mr. Me6, but I don't actually know if that's true. Maybe it would double the chance that we would succeed, if that makes sense. I mean, that's. I, I, do we want to get pedantic about it? I mean, one of the very few things. I, I'm not exactly like a mathematics expert. One of the very few things I get pedantic about is is probability, and. It, the reason I get pedantic about probability is because, you know, being pedantic is, is not being pedantic. It's actually, like, changing the terms that you would use to evaluate things. I know that sounds pedantic, but, like, you know, if you if it's a 50% chance that Mr. Me6 uh, is going to give you something, if, if you put him over top of it, and a 50% chance that it's going to hit you with a eh, eh, um, like when you give a duplicate answer on Family Feud Fast Money, um, then it doesn't actually double your chances if you do it twice. You know, because there's no payout where you actually get the same item two times. You know, it, it actually just raises your chances by another 50%, which takes it to 75. But anyway, I digress. Okay, we're, we're gonna just use Pandora's box. It's not the best use case for it, but on the other hand, it was also completely free. And Mr. Me6, I'm just gonna say it, it's still pretty pogged up. Still very happy to have it. Um, it's not going to be a second secret room, so I, I think, honestly, out of these, why not at least try? Fair enough. We're not going to use Jar of Flies, um, so we might as well just try to get something else out of it. Uh, and then, I mean, this floor is pretty much toasted. What's, what's our, uh, purity bonus? Oh, it's so good, dude! I don't know our purity bonus right now. If I had to guess... Is it tears? It is tears. We were at 16 earlier. Alright, so that's disappointing that it only takes us to that level. Um, but that's okay. I'm recording this whole episode, by the way. Uh, hoping <laughs> that I actually did fix the audio issue. Otherwise, you might be getting like a... I mean, I'm sure, you know, lots of people watching this are working from home. I've, I've taken some meetings from home, um, and it's amazing to me the, the kinds of uh, setups that people have. And you, you'll see it on the news, actually, like when we were watching the election coverage. Like, there's some people that, you know, they'll be like, Hey, uh, it's Professor Businessman. Uh, he's uh, got a net worth of $75 trillion, but he's using, like, a tin can with a Game Boy camera taped to it as his, uh, as his Zoom work-from-home setup. And here he is on the biggest news network in the world. Um, and then sometimes they'll be like, hey, it's, uh, Tim Bookman, and he's an author, and, uh, you're like, yo, Tim Bookman 100% streams D&D &D on the weekends. He's got, like, the streamer 4K camera with the blurred background behind him. 
I've been in the same boat. There's like some some people that I have meetings with and it's fine, you know, like nobody expected everyone to be in this situation, obviously. But some people, you know, I have meetings with, not that it happens with that much regularity, um, but they're like crisp and clear and they got the fiber Wi-Fi. And then some people is like, clearly they're using like an old laptop and the camera's like half cracked. And, you know, you, you learn a lot about somebody by the way that they... They show up for these meetings. <laughs> you learn about how much money they've invested in their home office. Let's put it that way. You see someone with a, with a 4K camera and a green screen. You're like, okay, I get it. You know, you're, you're, you've been playing some, uh, playing some video games in your spare time. You want to play some Rocket League? Anyway. What am I talking about? I don't know. It's, I, I, I got a great story from today. Um, I pride myself, okay, and this, uh, as whenever I tell a story like this, whatever I say first, you know it's gonna get contradicted by where we go after that. It's the way that I tend to build out a story. I start by giving my impression of myself, and then I end by subverting your expectations and revealing that the real world does not see me with that elevated of a position as I, as I happen to see myself. Um, which is what makes these stories great. But... I pride myself, I, as a child, I lost things so often. My mom would be like, you know, where at? And I, this is going to be so relatable for a, a certain chunk of people watching this. Uh, I, and I know it, okay? So when I was a kid, I was forgetful. I would lose stuff all the time, get distracted, you know. Uh, hey, uh, Ryan, welcome back from school. Where's your backpack? Oh, frick. Hey, where was that toque I sent you with today? A toque is like a, is a hat in Canada. Um, where was, uh, you, we only have one mitten. What happened? You know, I, I lost things on the regular. I was always the, the kid who, like, you know, I would have to ask the teacher for a pencil because I would lose. Uh, excuse me. You've been stunned. I would ask my teacher for a pencil all the time because I, like, would lose or not bring my own. I understand how annoying that is to not be prepared. I'm actually pretty happy with this, to be honest with you. I got, I got a theory here. Let's just work with this one for a second. I want to see how this goes. I thought maybe it would give me another item. Instead, it just moved him closer. <laughs> uh, or it moved the body closer, I should say. Um, but anyway, so you know what happened is that as I got older, you would think that I would lose things less. That's not really the case. I've just simplified my life to the point where I like only carry stuff on my person if it's strictly necessary. You know, I only carry my phone, my keys, and my wallet on the regular. And I have a great track record of having never lost any of them. And the reason I don't lose them is because I, I don't, I, it's, I, I, I pat down my three pockets constantly. That way I know there's like triage. If I miss, if I'm missing one, then I know like, okay, what was the last place I patted down at? You get the idea. Now, Kate will attest. If she gives me anything else to hold on to, there's like a 20% chance it's gone. If she's like, hey, you know, can you hold these boarding passes for like 30 seconds while I go to the bathroom? She'll come back and be, it, best case scenario, they're crumpled. She'll be like, how did these papers get so crumpled? And I'll be like, I don't know. I just held them and they, they crumpled, I guess. Hey, where's my water bottle? Oh, right, I forgot you gave that to me. I left it on a bench like 10 minutes ago. You know, that I'm not proud of it, but that's I, I come by it honestly, you know? I, I got to work on my, my focus and my diligence. I get so distracted sometimes. But anyway... I don't lose anything because I don't carry anything. Same reason, like, oftentimes people, you know, like Kate or, or my mom, for example, will be like, make sure you wear a coat. You know, it's it's cold out. And I agree, you should wear a, co a coat when it's cold out. However, sometimes I'm like, if it's just a little chilly, I'm like, I don't want to wear a coat because if I take it off, then I'm going to forget it. Same uh, boat. I think we do want to try this. Same boat if uh, we, like... You know, in the before times, if we would go to a restaurant, they'd be like, can we take your jacket? I'd be like, I'd rather you didn't. I'd rather just wear it like forever. <laughs> um, because that way, let's go, dude. Uh, I'm not going to forget. I'm not going to like leave it on the chair or leave it at coat check or something when I leave the restaurant. You know what I mean? So this is all like an overly extensive preamble to say that I lost my wallet today. And... Uh, it's the worst thing to lose, you know? Losing your wallet's always bad. Uh, I'm not gonna say that it's necessarily like worse for me than it is for anybody else, but 
You know, why is it bad? Well, first off, it's a nice wallet. Secondly, you know, there's no cash inside of it, but you always have the risk of like, you know, banking fraud. You know, someone's going to take your credit card or your debit card and rack it up. Um, and then on top of that, you know, it, you have to replace everything in it. I got ID in there, which is very important, like your driver's license, your your health card for British Columbia, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but then on top of that, you got even like smaller stuff that is less urgent, but still annoying. Like, oh, I got to replace my grocery rewards card and, you know, my uh, insurance, like my home insurance card and stuff like that. Like just all this stuff that you got to remember all of a sudden. And then also, like, if you have God to help you, if you have any, like, two-factor stuff in your wallet, like, then you know it's going to be, like, a disaster, right? Um, so I was panicking. I checked everywhere. I checked my pockets. I checked the pants I, I was wearing, like, two days ago. Um, you know, I checked under that stuff to... S oh, there's a tinted rock, you fool. Okay, we did it. Uh, I checked under that stuff in case it fell out. Checked around my desk. I called the, the store I was at the other day to be like, um, you know, do you have it? And they were like, no. Then Kate was like, okay, don't panic. I'll go take a look for it. You just watch the baby for a little bit. She found it in like three seconds. You know where it was? It was in my pants pocket of the other pants that I wore the other day. Which I swear to you, I checked. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm not gonna say it's it's a men versus women thing, but I, I know like, you know, my mom does it for my dad all the time too. I, I really relate to a lot of my mom's stories. Like sometimes my mom will be like, your father, because my dad's like at home alone right now while my mom's still here. Um, he's like, your father asked me, like, where's the mustard? And I said, it's in the third, like very specifically, it's in the third drawer of the fridge next to the ketchup. And then he sent me a photo that said, I don't see it, where is it? And then in the photo, it's exactly where I said it is. And I said that to him, and then he like looked at it and was like, oh, you're right. I do that all the time. I don't want to. Trust me, it's annoying for me as well. <laughs> there are times where I'll be like, you know, hey, where's, I thought we bought, um, I thought we bought cashews. Where are the cashews? Kate will be like, they're in the pantry. And I'll be like, where? And she's like, next to the nori. And I'm like, I'm looking at the nori. It's not here. And I'll even get like accusatory sometimes. Did you move them? <laughs> Some kind of elaborate cashew plot? Is this your, this is your game? I got a good one. I'm going to buy some cashews and then hide them. I know you're, you're sneaky like that. Okay, careful. That was that was a spicy one. As was that. I'm upset. I do, please, I just need a key. Just a wafer thin key. I know I can use Mr. Me Too to do some damages here. In hindsight, by the way, they probably should not have called this item Mr. Me Too, but how could they have known? Anyway. All of a sudden, you know, I'm like, you got to come over here and look at this. She looks at it and then she like it's as if she materializes the cashews from thin air. She's like, look, it's right here next to the nori. And then you're like left embarrassed. You're like, um, first off, thank you. Secondly, I was looking there and I didn't see them. <laughs> you got, you got no leg to stand on, right? Just the key. Just throwing it out here that, that to get a key would be pretty sweet. Like this is, is dangerous. The danger was uh, kind of muted earlier because of the fact that we had uh, a good purity aura working out for us. Now we have the range aura, which is literally like nothing. It's actually like even worse because the purity damage aura had us at like 8 damage or 9 damage. And the <laughs> without the damage aura, we're at 2.74. It's really, really putting it into perspective. But we do have the goat head, and we're not doing anything with our red hearts right now, so... Alright, that's an interesting one. Um, dude, we gotta take blood bag. This is, this is like a great opportunity. Oh, but we can't get it! <laughs> wait, wait, we can get it! These nightmarish creatures can be felled. They can be beaten! That's huge, dude. That's actually, like, enormous. Now, I'm not fighting anything else. Why not? Because it's like, it's stupid. You ever consider that? 
I don't want to fight that angel statue uh, with 2.74 damage. You missed your chance. Anyway, Mr. Me Too is doing some great work for us here. There we go. Okay, so step one. Probably want to go to our shop. We could just buy a key. We could buy a battery charge. Mr. Meesix could probably give us an item for five cents if there is that available. This is a weird one. Um, so I'll tell you, we definitely just want Mom's contact. And then I think we want to blow this up and reroll. Guardian Spear is fine. But we wanted to see if maybe there was a battery charge. No battery charge, we can get a key. I think we'll probably just leave this floor with whatever we get here and then count our blessings that we're still doing all right. Uh, certainly the bean is not what we wanted, but I'm, I'm happy that we at least did the due diligence, right? Let's move along here. Because we, we, yeah, we got nothing for you. Take me down to the paradise city where the grass is green and the items are litty. Oh, won't you please? Okay, so we got range, no thank you. We got speed, not sad to see it go. We got range. This is like, again, no thank you. Honestly, I'm willing to take a hit to try to get a better uh, purity bonus. And it, it's a bit spicy, I'll admit. It's rarely is it the, from a game standpoint, rarely is it the right decision um, to uh, to take damage to get a benefit. Um, but I, I'm willing to do it a, like that just that one time, honestly. I'll probably take some organic damage just to over-reliance on my orbital in the future anyway. So, there you go. For example. But yeah, all that, that previous anecdote is to say two things. One is, thank you to my wife. And then uh, the other one is, uh, I'm riding that high right now. You know the high I'm talking about when you think. You know, you've already mentally sort of started to deal with the anxiety and, and the chores surrounding something. And then, you know, it turns out that actually everything's completely fine. One day, I'm sure it will have. I'll sh I'm sure I'll lose my wallet for real one day. But it's not today, and that's the important part for me right now. I will also. Oh, dude, that's really good. The other thing I'll say is that um, nobody is good at looking for things after they start to panic. There's basically like m I would say 95% of the time, my wallet is. Oh, dude, that's so good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. No! <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's go. 95% of the time, my wallet is uh, in my pocket. If it's not in my pocket, it doesn't trigger the anxiety yet. Because it's usually on my desk. You know, maybe like I paid a, an online bill or something like that. Um, if it's not on my desk, that's where like the, the start of the panic starts to kick in that's where you're like huh uh, this covers literally like 99 percent of the potential um outcomes for this now we're starting to get a little funky and uh anyway long story short it'd be, this is a very like elaborate way of just being like yeah we found it and by we i mean my wife anyway so i'm feeling good and i was i was happy more than anything else to just have an anecdote dude it's been a while <laughs> uh, we'll try this because why not beautiful um, I'm not really interested in using a battery charge uh, to get the book of Belial because we're I get that it's one third of bookworm but just doesn't interest me I'm just going to tell you I'm going to call it like I see it. it feels like kind of a waste of time It's anti-min-max technology. But regardless, we'll be, uh, we'll be moving on here. And it, honestly, feeling very good about this run. Feeling very good about Isaac in general. You know, it, it really shook me to my core when we were losing a little bit more frequently in Isaac. Even if it was just that one kind of Malcolm Gladwell outlier. Where after six runs, we had a run that was truly horrible and, and gave us a loss. Kind of, uh, the passive voice is doing a lot of... A lot of heavy lifting on that one, but <laughs> it gave us a loss. We didn't lose. A loss was gifted to us. Um, 
But, you know, I some days I do well in Spelunky, but I've had a lot of trash runs lately. Some days I do well in Fall Guys, I've had some spicy ones lately. And some days, you know, I do well in neither, and then, you know, whatever the Flex video is maybe doesn't do that well either. And, uh... I'm, uh... Isaac is like the bedrock, you know? It's the foundation that I build everything else on top of. Especially when it's the first video of the day. So I always feel like being able to start almost like with some routine Isaac victories. It really sets the tone for my day. You know, it's like, I, I think everybody, we're, all, we're routine based creatures, right? Like people like spontaneity, but nobody's ever like, oh, you know what I really like is when my expectations for doing things are completely subverted every single day. Like, there's a, I mean, I was going to say there's a reason companies do this, but really, what I should really say is, like, if your company doesn't do this, I feel bad for you. You know, at, at any organization I've ever worked at that has regular meetings, the meetings always take place at the, like, a, a set time, right? There's always, like, a, a 9.15 a.m. meeting when everybody's in and settled, and then there's, like, a post-lunch, like, you know... 215 meeting where we talk about you know other things that came up during the day things that we want to do for the rest of the afternoon and what might be like first on the docket for tomorrow morning um can you imagine if like the meetings were just at a different time every single day you'd never get anything done or well quite hilariously you actually might get more done because you'd be perhaps spending less time in meetings but you get what i mean you know it's the same thing i'm sure you know when you start your day you got a routine no matter what your job is you know Maybe you go in, you check your voicemail first. After your voicemails are done, you're like, okay. Now that the voicemail triage is done, I can move on to email. And then after that, like, you know, people will... Let, let's say you work in IT. I think this is a good example, right? You work in IT. How do you feel if you have, like, a support, uh, like, a queue ticketing system? And while you're moving through, like, high-priority tickets... Somebody knocks on your door and is like, hey, uh, you know, oh, is Outlook working? I mean, if it's your boss, what are you going to do? But, you know, what doesn't it annoy you? You're like, hey, Bob, I, I'm, you know, I feel bad that your outlook isn't working right now, but there's a system here. The CEO accidentally sent all of our sensitive data to a phishing scam. <laughs> I'm going to need you to get to the back of the line temporarily because, you know, there's a there's an order for these things. Some people are, you know, they want their routine disrupt or they're they're okay with their routine being disrupted more than others i'm pretty routine driven I'll, i'm willing to admit it i'm at that weird like intersection of uh inefficiency where i'm like i um am disorganized but also want everything to be ordered if we ever i'm gonna be honest with you here i'm just gonna take skeleton key because i i think maybe i've never gotten it I don't know, man. I, I honestly, I don't have an answer for you. Maybe not, because we didn't just get an achievement. Whatever. Who cares? We're, we're playing Isaac. We're having fun. So whenever Isaac goes well, it the, the worst part of it is, it doesn't mean that I'm going to have a great day, but it means that the stage is set for me to ha not have a terrible one. <laughs> I can be like, ooh, at least, you know, there's a lower minimum for the for this day right now. Although, we'll see how today is uh, once I check the audio on this episode. So, they, genuinely, like, the audio on the last episode was fine. Um, and then I... You're going to laugh because it's so fitting. But I had a, uh, a meeting on Google Meet that must have disrupted my audio settings for some reason. Which is... Also annoying, because now I'm like, holy crap, this is like the seventh meeting I've taken on Google Meet in the past, you know, month. And if if my audio was disrupted for every single one of those, I'm like the guy you see on the news where you're like, could they just send this guy like a new microphone, please? Because there's, I mean, I, I Windows, you know, you got to appeal to, you, you got to build a system that works for like, you know, three billion people worldwide or something like that. Um, maybe that's a little high number, but... I will say, the idea that your primary audio device would default to your webcam if you have a microphone plugged in, and you can tell it's a microphone, 
based on like the metadata uh, surrounding like when you go into the device manager it doesn't just say like you know we don't know what this is it goes like it's an audio device it's a USB microphone or whatever I feel like it should always default to the USB microphone or the XLR or anything but the webcam mic nobody has a standalone microphone that is worse than their webcam it's never happened in human history To the best of my knowledge. Okay, we are we're taking some dumb damage. I'm not proud of it. On the other hand, we do have goat head. So we got we got some good opportunities for success in the future. I'm also gonna tell you, and you're gonna be annoyed by this one, because this run's actually pretty good. Slash very good. Chaos has worked out super well for us. We got a lot of HP, a couple of good items. But even with all the items we have that are pretty good, the run okay, th this makes it better, I'll admit. But the run, oh, we should have done this differently, kind of sucks. Just from a, a DPS standpoint, you know? And no matter what you do, you can't change. Uh, it's hard to get over, let me put it that way. It's hard to get over a bad damage and a bad rate of fire stat. Eight's not a, t a terrible rate of fire, but it kind of is when you got 4.75 damage. Just chill. There we go. That, that's supposed to be the money maker. So we're kind of in a position where, like, it's we're, we're going to win. Mostly because we have just this stupid amount of HP and, and good means to get more of it over time. Um, but definitely, like, I'm, I'm a little surprised at the fact that we have not gotten, like, you know, basically any damage upgrades for the whole run except for Ma of the Void. <laughs> it's a pretty low roll in the whole scheme of things. But anyway, I'm not complaining too much. It, it may have given us low damage, but it gave us a, 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 a way out. Just like that game that's exclusive to Origin. Also called A Way Out. It was a fun game. Not, not a, you know, the greatest game ever made, for sure. I've actually... It's one of the very rare games I've ever played through two times. At least in the last, like, ten years. So, if you want to take that as a vote of confidence... Or uh, as a as a sign of enjoyment, please do. I played it through with Kate on on Kate's uh, stream for co-op streams, and I played it through with Mathis on uh, YouTube. Okay, so it's all an elaborate scam to get a couple of extra keys out of me, huh? If you'll just allow me to go here. Regardless, what am I talking about? I don't know, man. I don't have an answer for you. Playing Isaac. Having fun. Getting ready to do some other stuff today. I guess, you know, if I can give you a baby anecdote. I'm always hesitant to give, like, baby anecdotes like this. Because people have very strong opinions about parenting. But I'm going to do it anyway. Um, our baby slept for, like, eight to eight and a half hours straight last night. Which is absurd. <laughs> there was a period of time in Isaac episodes, like, pretty recently, where I was like, we got a great baby, she sleeps all the time. I don't know what's going on, but I think she's just got it all figured out. You know, she sleeps from uh, 10.30 to 5.30. That's not amazing, but it's pretty good. And then she went through a period of almost like a regression, where she'd go to bed at 10.30, she'd wake up at like 2, she'd wake up at 5, she'd wake up at 7, she'd wake up at 8.30, you know, and... You know, you get you get used to it, um, and it, it doesn't last forever, I guess. But it, it was not ideal. Imagine my surprise, because it's it's almost a feeling of terror as well, when you, w you wake up and you, uh, you know, you look at the the blinds and the sun is out, and you're like, oh no, <laughs> this is not normal. <laughs> I'm not used to waking up. For the first time after sunrise, uh, right now. But no, she was fine. She did have a huge meal, um, before bed. And a huge meal when we woke her up around, like, you know, 7.30, 8. Because the problem is, like, you're supposed to wake up the baby more frequently because the baby's got a tiny little stomach. Can only hold, you know, like... 150 milliliters, maybe, at this point, And they digest it super quickly, right? Um, so you're supposed to wake them up overnight. 
On the other hand, there's also some, you know, methodology that's like, don't wake up your sleeping baby because sleep is where they get, you know, it's good development time. It's also easier on the parents, but, you know, the brain is growing during that time as well. So, anyway, long story short, I was pretty stoked and I do not take it for granted. <laughs> it, it may well... Even if it's the last time she sleeps through the night for like an, another month or so, that's still that's pretty good. I can live with it. Just just that brief glimmer of hope. But I will say, I can't stress enough. It's pretty expensive. But if you have the means and you're you're a new parent, for peace of mind, we have this this sock that's called an owlet. And I, again, I don't know the efficacy of it, so I'm kind of, it's its a bit of a blind trust sort of situation. Source, dude, just trust me. Um, but it supposed, I, I believe that it accurately monitors the baby the baby's heart rate, um, which it, I believe 100%. It's supposed to also actively monitor, like, if, in case there's blood hypoxia, like they, they, they're not getting enough oxygen to their brain, or just in the supply to begin with. Uh, I don't, that's where I'm a little bit more dubious, but I'll admit that I also, like, what do I know, you know? I'm not a, a medical expert in this sort of stuff, so, or in any sort of stuff for that matter. Um, even though he's the one they call Dr. Feel Good, he's the one that, okay, no, no, no thank you. Um, but even if it never, ever plays the alarm, which we've been lucky enough to not have it play the alarm for us ever, um, that is like, you know, DEFCON 1. It's, I would recommend it as a purchase just for peace of mind. If you're the kind of person that is not going to wake up every morning and your first thought is going to be like, let me see if my newborn has lived through the night, maybe you don't need it. If you're the kind of person like me that like without this device, you would look over like every 35 seconds to make sure, you know, her stomach's still rising and falling, then I would definitely suggest at least looking into it. It is it is very much helped my uh, anxiety about the the subject. Again, I I don't think it's a scam. It might not be one hundred percent effective. But it's one of those things where, like, if something quells your anxiety, you don't really want to look into it and, and potentially ruin that placebo effect. So, honestly, if you're selling me nothing, but it works, then as far as I'm concerned, you got me. I'm giving you a five-star review. It's the way I'm choosing to think about it. So, for the very... I mean, I honestly, I, I always assumed I had a, a demographic that, would, like, you know was not kind of in that newborn range in terms of like rearing obviously there's a lot of newborns watching these videos I, it's my comedy tends to appeal to the under 18 month demographic unfortunately that's really bad because they're not a very spendy group people buy them things but the newborns very rarely purchase anything for themselves they're, they're very selfless like that um, however no. What? Uh, since since talking about baby stuff, dude, there's a lot of people, and I appreciate it, who are like, "Hey, but I don't haven't commented much in the past, but you know, with all the baby anecdotes, just wanted to let you know, like, you know, here's a good piece of advice. It's been very helpful. Thank you so much. All right, maybe the time has come for us to actually use Mr. Me Six to do some damage." Our stats are a little bit better. Certainly still kind of bad for where we're at in the game and the number of item pedestals we've had, but but they're, you know... I, I have a hard time complaining too much about where we're at. A lot of the damage that I'm taking is really just laziness. <laughs> you know it, I know it, I'm not gonna deny it. A lot of the damage we're taking is like... Most of the time I have more damage at this point in the run, so I'm just gonna walk into enemies, you know? I, I know myself. Even, you know, uh, my most base instincts to complain and whine. I acknowledge them. I try to weed them out, but it's hard, you know? I don't think anybody wants to be whiny. I think it just sort of... 
Like, I've been thinking about that. Like, at what age is a person... This is, like, such a horrible topic to get into with maybe less than two minutes left. But I was thinking, like, at what age is a, do you start holding a person responsible for their own actions, right? Obviously, when, like, a baby cries, you don't go, ah, what a selfish baby, right? You go, that's just, that's what babies do. And then when a toddler acts up, usually you have the same level of, uh, like, awareness of that. You're like, they're a toddler, you know, the brain's not fully formed. The worst you might do is be like, ooh, the parents shouldn't let them get away with that. And I think that holds true for children, like, all the way up you know, into, like, middle school age, right? Like, if somebody's kind of an a-hole as a 12-year-old, you don't go, like, oh, what that 12-year-old kid's a jerk. Most of the... As an adult, at least, you wouldn't say that. You would be like, that kid has, like, some terrible parents that are setting a horrible example. I don't know how... If that's true 100% of the time, but I think that's the conventional wisdom for sure. So then, I don't know, when you're, like, 16, if you're kind of an a-hole... I mean, obviously, I'm not talking about, like, criminal-level stuff here. But if you're 16 and you're kind of an a-hole... People are like, oh, that's just how teenagers are. Which maybe we shouldn't accept, like, that kind of... It depends on the behavior. I'm not trying to get on, like, a horrible slippery slope, but you get what I mean. You know? But then, like, I... There, there are people I know, like, in my life that are... At the adult age, you know? In their, in their 20s or 30s. And, like, the, the worst... And I, I don't mean that in a rude way, but the worst aspects of their personality... They actually have, like, genuine excuses for it. You know, they like, I have this problem that I suffer with because of this that happened in my childhood. My parents always taught me this, which is a warped version of what the real world is like. So this is why I react like this in these situations. And, you know, this is the reason, like, I, I you know, you get the idea. Because you're, you're always kind of, you know, working on this model that you, you've built in progress based on the examples that you've had in your life, right? So I've been... I, I know that I, I'm trying to come to a definitive answer. I don't think a definitive answer exists. But I, what, I, what I think I've realized, and it, it's it's I've still got some growing up to do with this. Whenever somebody, like most people, probably have some degree of self-awareness about the aspects of themselves that other people might find annoying. I know my own, uh, you know, the things people find annoying about me. Um, for sure. Like, I, I can be very, um, like, dismissive, I think is, I, I you know, if, if somebody is saying something and I don't think they're getting to the point fast enough, I drift off and I go like, uh-huh, 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 let me talk, let me talk, it's my turn. Like, I, I, I acknowledge that sort of stuff. And I acknowledge that it's bad, but it's very hard to kind of, like, break those patterns. So I'm not trying to suggest, like, you know, if somebody's like a, do we hold a 50-year-old murderer accountable for their, their crime, even when, uh... You know, that oh, but their dad was an alcoholic in 1963. You know, I, I mean, maybe there's there's a place for more sensitivity surrounding that, but I do think at some point, and especially considering the level of the offense, you know, you gotta have some responsibility for your own actions into adulthood. But at the same time, also having a little bit more tolerance for, like, the things you find annoying about people, they're probably not trying to be annoying. Instead, you know, they, they set those behaviors into, you know, soft concrete. When their brain was still so plastic, and then it kind of hardened, and now you're you're stuck with the cynic that you see before you today. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya.